Welcome. I'm Glenn Goldman, current board president of CTI. I would like to welcome you and thank you for coming out in this weather, enduring some of our bottles of wine, passing on, going somewhere else, our little electrical issue. Well, we're going to have a great time tonight. We're really happy that you could join us at the Come Play With Us event where we have the privilege of honoring some of Community Teamwork's key players. Before we get our program underway, I would just like to take a minute to thank some of our sponsors tonight. Without our corporate and individual donors, CTI could not continue providing so many needed services to the members and clients of our community. I really especially like to thank our premier sponsor, Enterprise Bank and Trust Company. Our platinum sponsor, Fred C. Church Insurance. And our three gold sponsors, Digital Federal Credit Union. Carol and George Duncan. And Washington Savings Bank. We're also so very grateful to our silver and bronze sponsors. They and all of the other donors are listed in your program. I hope you'll take a minute to look at all of those who helped make tonight possible. And if you can use those businesses, it will be like a thank you from CTI. So thank you so much. At Community Teamwork, we could also not function without the dedicated board of directors who donate their time, energies, in so many ways for the organization. Several of our board members are here tonight, and I would just like to take a moment to introduce them. So if you could stand or wave when I call your name. First, we have Mickey Cockrell. Lowell City Councilor Rodney Elliott. Laura Hodgson. Bopa Malone. Lowell City Councilor Rita Mercier. Rita O'Brien Dean. <laughs> Sheila Oach. <laughs> Dennis Kinda. <Pindak>. Marie Sweeney. <laughs> Jermaine Vincent Kundell. <laughs> Bernadette Wheeler. <laughs> Rich Lemoyne. And a special welcome to our former board president, Mr. Tom Joyce. Yay! I would also like to thank Lowell School Committee person, Jackie Doherty, for joining us this evening. And then lastly, I would like to introduce CTI's Chief Executive Officer, Karen Frederick, to continue the program. Thank you, Glenn, and board members, for all you do for community teamwork. And thank you to our elected officials who are here today and those who are not. We truly, truly appreciate all of your support from our federal, state, and local delegations. We're so very grateful. So welcome to Community Teamwork's Winterfest. <laughs> To our honorees and guests here tonight, welcome to Come Play With Us. Community Teamwork's Board of Directors and our Executive Management Team welcome you here to the James A. Hularis Center. And by the way, the real James A. Hularis is here tonight. We introduce Jim and his wife Pam. Jim is our former Head Scout Director who spent a distinguished career here at Community Teamwork 
and he continues to work with the National Head Start Council. So thank you, Jim, for your years of commitment to children and families. I'd also like you to meet our executive management team who together guide this organization. We welcomed a new member to our team this year, our Division Director of Housing and Homeless Services, Carl Howell. Carl. And along with Carl and the executive management team are Connie Martin, our Division Director for Community Resources. Bill Lipschitz, our Director of Real Estate Operations for Common Ground Development Corporation. Long title. Lisa Holman, our Director of Human Resources. Michael Collins, our Chief Program Officer. Penny Judd, our Chief Financial Officer. And a very special acknowledgement to Executive Assistant Charlene Urbanak, who keeps us all going. Our nationally accredited and high quality early education and care programs uh, are led by a talented trio. Megan Sembor, who I believe is here tonight. Mike Bacigalupo. And Tulo Sananda. The key players being honored tonight all have great stories and give back to our communities in many different ways. To begin, I'll tell you a little bit about community teamwork so you'll see how their work helps us implement our mission. Our mission at Community Teamwork is to be a catalyst for social change. We strengthen our communities and reduce poverty by delivering vital services and collaborating with key stakeholders to create housing, education, and economic opportunities. We do this by providing programming in three areas, housing and homeless services, community resources, child and families, and adolescent services. Our key players represent each of these areas of our work. In the last year, we worked in 63 communities in Middlesex and Essex counties, and we provided services to over 50,000 individuals. We helped them move out of poverty, or we prevented them from ever falling into poverty. In the past year alone, we've opened a new early education and care site in Dracut. We expanded our shelter capacity and services. We worked across the Merrimack Valley to provide services for homeless youth. And we were leaders in a state initiative to place homeless individuals in jobs. We also moved forward a major technology data project that will allow us to look at data from over 30 databases in one warehouse. This will allow us for the very first time to track client progress across all of our programs and to implement a coordinated case management system, a major undertaking. Also, we just completed our every three year community needs assessment and from that we're developing our strategic plan for the next three years. If you'd like to hear more about our extensive community assessment and the needs that we found, attend the Greater Lowell Community Foundation annual meeting, which will be held on June 6th at Tewksbury Country Club. Thank you, Executive Director Jay Linehan, for the opportunity to speak there. This year, we chose this site and this theme Come play with us to highlight our work with children and families. So today, May 25th, is not only Come Play With Us Day, it is National Red Nose Day. The mission of National Red Nose Day is to raise awareness and money to help kids who need us the most and to end child poverty here at home and around the world. And it's to raise money by having fun and making people laugh. And I think that's what we're doing here tonight. So in that spirit, if you have a red nose, I'm going to ask you to join me. And I will see if I can talk with this red nose on. And I'm sure there'll be some ugly pictures of this later, but anyway, it's for a good cause. So put your noses on and join us in the fight to end child poverty.
Over 1,400 children and families receive early education and care services. I'm losing my nose. Okay, do you have your noses on? Because we really want to get a picture. Where's Julia? Julia, come on up. We want you to take the audience with their red noses. And we're going to have to do this fast because it's really hard to breathe and talk with this nose on. So I'm not going to last very long. So, okay, are we ready? Red nose is on. When we say three, say cheese. One, two, three. Cheese! <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to tell you about our 1,400 children that receive early education and care, Head Start, Early Head Start, Family Child Care, After School Programs, and Youth Build in our Division of Child, Family, and Adolescent Services. This Alara Center is our largest facility right here, serving 400 children every day. All of our sites provide the comprehensive services that you find here. The two generation approach that we use is based on research that tells us the critical impact of high quality early education and care has on children and their future development. And it tells us when the whole family does better, the child does better. So tonight, I hope you have fun, laugh, honor our key players, enjoy the games, food, beverages, and each other, and know that you are participating locally to help us end childhood poverty in the Merrimack Valley and build stronger communities every day. Thank you. Now I can breathe again. So now it's my pleasure to introduce our Master of Ceremonies for the awards presentation. Someone who doesn't, I know, need an introduction in this crowd, but please welcome a good friend to all of us, former State Senator, Chair of Ways and Means, a community teamwork local hero, and so much more, Steve Pangiotakis. I tried to put this on with my big Greek nose, I could never fit. Sure. Next year, a couple double X's in these, please. Um, before we start with our honoring our recipients, let me, uh, let's take a minute to uh, remember two dear friends of community teamwork, but also of our Greater Lowell area community. Steve Jones was Vice President of Community Development at Jean d'Arc Credit Union, was a longtime member of the Board of Directors and Advisory Board of Big Brothers Big Sisters, one of the key player honorees this evening, always present, present for local charities, and always, always participating to make our communities better. Fred Simon, a community and teamwork local hero, was a passionate leader in civic, charitable, and religious areas throughout his life. He was a well-known champion for those in need and affiliated with many local organizations, known for his kindness, compassion, dedication, and loyalty to others. Elaine and Julie are here this evening, Fred's uh, wife and daughter. For both Steve's family and Fred's family, we say thank you. As blessed as you were to have them, we are blessed that you shared them with them and they made such a positive impact for our community. Just take a second, please. Thank you. Tonight, we get to honor three key players. And we'll start with the first one. Recently, I came across a uh, book entitled Evicted, Poverty and Profit, Profit in the American City. And it was written by a Harvard sociology professor, Matthew Desmond. And in fact, just recently won the 2017 Pulitzer Prize for his work, which followed the desperate housing odyssey of eight low-income families in Milwaukee. Desmond wrote, it is hard to argue that housing is not a fundamental human need. Decent, affordable housing should be a basic right for everybody in this country. The reason is simple. Without stable shelter, everything else falls apart. 
Our first recipient exists to keep everything from falling apart. And to introduce our first recipient, I am going to bring up Jermaine Vision Trudell, who is the President, uh, Executive Director, uh, Assistant Director, excuse me, of the Lowell Development and Financial Corporation. She's been on the Community Teamwork Board of Directors since 2003. Jermaine. Thank you, Steve. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. The Merrimack Valley Housing Partnership, MBHP for short, was founded in 1986 and worked as a developer of housing for low and moderate income earners. In 1991, MBHP shifted its focus to home ownership, education, and created a program known as Project Genesis, consisting of a comprehensive series of home buyer training seminars that provide responsible and sustainable home ownership opportunities for low and moderate income earners. In addition to the MBHP staff, representatives from numerous lending institutions, home inspectors, real estate brokers, and attorneys volunteer as instructors to provide the necessary and vital information needed to purchase your first home an important step toward independence, which often begins at CTI. To date, over 16,000 families have completed this program. Training is offered in English, Spanish, and Khmer, and on unique occasions in Arabic and Burmese, making it available to all who dream of owning their own home. MBHP also provides individual financial, and credit counseling to ensure that the first time home buyers are truly prepared to purchase their first home. MBHP has formed many partnerships in the community. Middlesex Community College provides free classroom space. The Cambodian Mutual Assistance Association assists with the interpretation for the Khmer classes. The Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust with their tree planting project and also the City of Lowell and the Lowell Development and Financial Corporation provide down payment assistance. Research conducted by a UMass Lowell graduate student found that at a minimum, one out of every 14 homes purchased in Lowell since the year 2000 was purchased by a Project Genesis graduate. Okay. Of those homes, there was a default rate of 1.6% versus the overall rate of 5.6%. I think that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Purchasing your first home can certainly be stressful, but having MVHP staff by your side every step of the way has made that process less daunting. There are numerous stories of Project Genesis graduates who thought they could never purchase a home for various reasons. But MBHP's help, they are now proud homeowners. But just bear with me for just a few quotes that I came up with to people. I went to MBHP to talk to Jim and Ed, and I knew I had found a place I could trust. Another one. After completing the training, I sat down with Ed and was advised on what steps to take. Take. Ed was like a doctor to me. I was sick and needed help becoming financially healthy. Thanks to the doctor's advice, I was able to meet my goals and buy my first home. We thought it impossible to buy a home until the class taught us how to track our spending and helped us get on track to build credit and save. It feels awesome. I can't believe this home is ours. One of the best feelings in the world. As a member of the board of MBHP, I see firsthand the hard work and dedication of the staff, volunteers, and fellow board members. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to present one of CTI's key player awards to the Merrimack Valley Housing Partnership.
the board. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think Jim Wilde, the executive director, might be the first one to speak. We travel in mass. Thank you, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Merrimack Valley Housing Board and staff, thank you very much. This is quite an honor, and we are thrilled. A common theme of what makes us all successful is the partnerships. The Merrimack Valley Housing Partnership is like the axle on a car. It only works if it has tires, an engine, a body, a roof, a radio, and of course, gas. We work with dozens of lenders, attorneys, home inspectors, and real estate brokers uh, to deliver the home by a training class. We work with the City of Lowell and the Lowell Development Financial Corporation who provide the uh, funds for down payment assistance. Yeah, and we do the classes, as Jermaine mentioned, in multiple languages, and we have a close relationship with CMAA to deliver the program to the Cambodian community. And CTI has been a strong supporter and ally uh, and, and we're most appreciative. I'd like to recognize, take this opportunity to remember Mary Noon. Mary was a founding member of the Merrimack Valley Housing Partnership 31 years ago, and she served on our board for almost 30 years. Mary was one of the first recipients of CTI's Local Heroes Award when she received her award in 1994. Mary passed away on February 1st. We keep Mary's humor and passion in mind as we do our work. Our condolences to her daughter, Rosemary Noon, who's with us today. We have a great board of directors, several of whom are with us tonight. And I'd like to recognize our stellar staff. Ed Alcantara is our home buyer, is our home buyer counselor is amazing. He has guided so many people to successful home ownership Kathy Mercado is also amazing. Kathy helps many people, many first-time home buyers with accessing the down payment assistance programs. And we're really a family. Uh, Paul Konitsky, who's not with us tonight, uh, has been on our board for 25 years. For the last 23 years, he's volunteered in the office 15 hours a week, uh, and through right now, um, in the, uh, helping doing uh, research for uh, new funding proposals. And Paul will be uh, turning 90 years of age in two weeks. Wow. And other than needing an escort from his car to the office, he's quick as a whip. <laughs> and I'd like to uh, invite Michael Breeder, our board president, to say a few words too. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. First, we'd like to offer our congratulations to the other honorees tonight, the recipients of the Community Teamworks Team Player Award. We here in, in Lowell, Greater Lowell, we're really fortunate that we have so many organizations, nonprofits, and individuals that are really out there daily for us, making our lives better. We live in a community where there's so much collaboration uh, and it's really it makes it sort of makes it easier for us to make a difference in the community uh, the housing partnership we're honored to have been chosen today from so many other organizations that are just as worthy as we are on behalf of the board of directors i'd also like to thank jim for his leadership jim is our key player He's the one that kind of keeps things going. He's been with the organization a long time, and it's because of his dedication that the partnership's been such a great success. Uh, we look forward to continuing to partner with other organizations in the community, and as, long, as well as community teamwork to make Greater Lowell a great place to work, live, and play. Thank you.
right on the side here in front of the Abraham Lincoln once said, you never stand as tall as when you stoop to help a child. Our next recipient as an organization has been stooping to help children since its inception. And not only do they stoop to help them, but they lift them up. They lift them up into self-esteem, into uh, realizing that their dreams can be a reality, into mutual respect, and into friendship. And by so doing, change the future for their lives, but also the future for our community. I want to introduce Nick and Nate Tim, who will introduce our next recipients. The twins grew up in Drake and Lowell. They were enrolled in the Big Brother Big Sisters program and were matched with their big brothers when they were 10 years old. They both graduated from Lowell High School and went on to college. Nick graduated from Whitworth with a degree in mechanical engineering. He has been employed at Raytheon since his college internship and is now in the management there. Nick is also completing his MBA from Southern New Hampshire University, which he's scheduled to graduate in 2018. Nathan graduated from Fitchburg State University with a degree in business and a minor in psychology. He is working for the technology company Rosetta Stone. Nathan is also in the process of becoming a big brother. Their participation in the program was critical to who they are today. Let's bring them both up. Hello, everyone. Hello. So, uh, rumor has it that it's also National Wine Day. So, uh, cheers to that. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Nicholas Tim, as he said, and I am honored to be here today to share some of my personal experiences with you all. Oftentimes, after I tell my life story, people show sympathy and compassion. Uh, however, one thing I always ask of those that are listening is to understand. Not understand that I expect to be treated any differently than others, but to understand that the cover of the book may be a little more intriguing compared to the words inside. First off, I have an identical twin brother. <laughs> he is 24 minutes older and he never lets me forget it. He's kind of my babysitter, right? That's why I stand behind me, make sure I don't mess up. So if I do mess up, it's his fault. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when we were just six years young, our mother got sick and ended up in the hospital. So now that's the more serious stuff. Uh, she dropped us off at a babysitter's house and said she would be back in two weeks. Well, she never came back. At the same time, my father was in and out of jail and has never attempted to rekindle our relationship with him. But we do have him on Facebook, because that's, you know, that's the thing nowadays. You just add him on Facebook, and then you can connect there, right? So though we were raised in a household of drugs and alcohol abuse, we have been able to go down the right path, and the sole reason for this is the Big Brother Big Sisters organization. Growing up, my brother and I never had that positive role model to look up to. No one to play catch with and learn how to throw a football. 
I can throw a Tom Brady spiral nowadays. <laughs> He's more of a Peyton Manning. Uh, no one to work on a car with, and most importantly, no male role model to show us how to talk to the smart girls in class. Yeah. Um, but in 2003, our lives changed for the better, and we became littles. Even though we're both taller than our bigs today. <laughs> Um, from grocery shopping to baseball games, they introduced us to a normal lifestyle and instilled in us that we can become whatever we put our minds to. In 2010, the Big Brother Big Sisters program was at a crossroads and could have ended programming in the greater Lowell area. Luckily, the board of directors, with their passion and commitment to the mission of the program, pursued a partnership with the community team work. By doing so, the Big Brother Big Sister program would be able to continue and flourish as a CTI program. The board of directors could have walked away at that point, but they did not. They transitioned uh, to the Big Brother Big Sisters Advisory Board and continued their dedication and support of those most in need of mentors. Many of the advisory board members have been with the organization for over 30 years. A lot, that's a lot older than I am. <laughs> I'm 24. <laughs> Not yet. Thank you. Thank you. Not that much older. Uh, the care and commitment they have given to the program gave children like myself and my brother the life-changing opportunity. Without it, life could have been drastically different. I am proud to say that I have completed my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, um, as well as uh, Nathan completing his bachelor's in business. He only wanted me up here so that he could make jokes about me and make everyone laugh. <laughs> Good evening. That's how it's always been. <laughs> it is my honor and privilege to thank and introduce the advisory board to you this evening. The comeback stories and empowerment of individuals like us wouldn't be possible without you. Please join me in welcoming the co-chairs Brenda Maley, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce these right, and right. Bud Mercury. And the <laughs> also with them, the rest of the Big Brother Big Sister Advisory Board, up here to the stage to be honored for their commitment and dedication to the organization. Thank you, everyone. Our, unfortunately, our whole board couldn't be here this evening, being on the front end of a long weekend. Many of them had already had family commitments and plans and were unable to be here. But there, I'll express our thanks on their behalf. But with me today is Steve Irish. Um, he, is, he works for Enterprise Bank. And, and Bill Gillette with Cooper's Library. Well, first I'd like to thank Nick and Nate for that uh, wonderful introduction and for that wonderful story. You're going to be a hard act to follow, and I think you've done a fabulous job, and you're to be congratulated. Good job. My remarks here today are on behalf of the entire advisory board of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Greater Lowell. Also, that would be co-chair Bud Mercury, Jim Hogan, Bill Gillette, Steve Irish, Lori McPhee, Carl Wiley, Bill Sisson, and Bob Flynn. I would also like to remember Steve Jones at this time, who was an integral and very important um, volunteer on behalf of the Golf Fundraising Committee. Uh, we, there are also many other individuals who volunteer on our fundraising events. Uh, our two primary fundraising events are a golf uh, fundraiser 
It takes place in September and a comedy show. And our comedy show has been going for about 30 years. And I always like to say that I think we were the first nonprofit to use a comedy show as a fundraiser. Of course, everyone has a comedy show these days, but we've been doing it for 30 years and we've continued to do it. And we do it with the help of two wonderful comedians, Tony V and Rick Jenkins. So thank you to all those volunteers for helping us. I'd like to thank Community Teamwork for selecting us to receive this honor. In particular, I'd like to thank Karen Frederick and Connie Martin, who have given their full support to Big Brothers Big Sisters since the inception of the concept of a potential merger, through the merger process up to the current time. They're a pleasure to work with and made us feel like a part of the CTI family from day one. I would also like to thank Bridget Quinn and Masada Jones, um, who work on behalf of Big Brothers Big Sisters every day to ensure that the mission of the program is fulfilled and successful. They are also instrumental in assisting in the board fundraising efforts. I'd also like to recognize Abby Torville, who was our longtime executive director and then program director through CTI, who has recently moved on to another position, but she's able to be here tonight. I'd like to recognize her and say thank you. We as a board are proud of the long history of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Greater Lowell, reaching into the community to provide desperately needed services to the children and youth of, the great, of Greater Lowell. Matching an adult volunteer with a child who is lacking in appropriate or adequate adult supervision, care, and nurturing is a cause that not only benefits the children and youth being served, but also a program that benefits society as a whole. Um, because the program typically makes a difference in a child's life, as you heard today from Nick and Nate. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Nick and Nate, as I said, are perfect examples of how Big Brother Big Sisters makes a difference in the life of a child. In 2010, the Board of Directors